The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good evening, everyone. Today we are going to discuss about document analysis. This is one of the technique in business analysis, and of course, this is an uh, elicitation technique. And today this webinar is brought to you by IABA Chennai chapter. Let us get started with the topic. And before that, we would like to thank Mr. Kannan Kansantanam sir, uh, President Chennai chapter IABA, uh, for his relentless efforts to bring out these kind of uh, webinars uh, for the benefit of business analysts throughout India. And this week is a, a kind of like a great week uh, in terms of uh, business analysts. Uh, we had the global leadership uh, team meet at Chennai. And Mr. Kannan Santanam sir arranged for this. And the, the photograph, uh, what you are seeing, uh, uh, shows uh, Mr. Stephen Ashworth presenting uh, BABOK to Mr. Kannan Santanam for uh, his efforts in uh, bringing this uh, Chennai chapter into a more functional and helping other chapters to come into existence. Let us get started with the topic. Today our agenda is uh, pretty large. Uh, let us uh, kind of like, uh, I hope I will be able to make justice for this uh, large amount of uh, topic in today's agenda. So the high level is like, uh, we will we'll talk about how document analysis helps uh, business analysts and what is the importance. I will be discussing a couple of case studies, uh, many case studies I would say. And at the end we will have uh, question answer sessions. And this whole recording will be available in um, IABS Chennai chapter uh, YouTube channel. And also it will be available in our website as a um, under the blog. Okay, let us uh, let us get started with this. We'll start with this small story. On July 4, 1956, Betty, um, she has a one month old son. His name is Peter. July 4th was a kind of like very a sunny day in New York. And uh, the thing is like, um, it was very pleasant and uh, around 11 a.m. in the morning, she placed her son in the baby carriage, just uh, kind of like outside of their house in the patio. And she suddenly got some work inside the home. So since Peter was sleeping, she thought, okay, I will get into the house and come back. But by the time she returned, she found the baby carriage empty. Peter was not there. But she found a small note, what you are seeing on the screen. There was a small note left by the kidnapper. And the thing is like, uh, he demanded a ransom of dollar 2000. This is in 1956, so you know what is the value of 2000 at that point of time. Maybe you can uh, even buy a house. So that is the, that is the kind of money that time. So he demanded a ransom from this mother as a middle-aged income group. The thing is like she was so shocked and at the bottom of this note, he also written, if she wants to go to police, the thing is like uh, there may be a huge danger awaiting for Peter. Like why we are discussing this small story in document analysis. This, this whole thing, this case was resolved by FBI using document analysis. The thing is like there is no evidence left by this kidnapper and he left only a piece of document that is his handwritten note but unfortunately he never thought that document analysis is so powerful. So what happened he kind of like the FBA handled this case and the thing is like uh, it was it was kind of like they finally narrowed down to one Angelo Lamarck and he is just he is residing seven kilometers away from Betty's home and the thing is like in the document he kind of like he was looking for making some quick money so he found that this mother is leaving her son at the, in the patio so he simply grabbed the uh, Peter and he left this note while while he was writing this he kind of like he could not hide any of his idiosyncrasies and at the same time the page from where he tear this it is one of the document connected to him 
in but in a long way okay not not a kind of like uh, not his name is written on that but it's a kind of like uh, it is the document connected with so let us not get into this kind of like nitty gritties of this case but this is about document analysis so what is document analysis document analysis is about document analysis is about studying the existing document within our organization and the documents relevant to the area of business analysis activity let me repeat the definition document analysis is nothing but reviewing the existing document within the organization and also the documents relevant to the the business analysis area of study which we have undertaken and the document analysis is not the not the technique that is of course only useful to business analysis but it is used in several other fields here we are kind of like this book kind of like this book is about document analysis and this case is presented in this book and this is about a kind of like solving crimes using forensic science and the kind of like the complete focus is on document analysis but this is a kind of like a very huge field and tremendously useful in archaeology forensic science history social research and of course in business analysis if you want to read this kind of like out of your curiosity if you want to read this about this case you have a link at this bottom of this page uh, that that goes to the fba site where you will find the complete detail about this case fine so we understood the importance of document analysis and we know what is the definition um, that that is about uh, kind of like what is the definition of document analysis document analysis is nothing but going through the existing documents within the organization so that we will get a better understanding about the area in which i am going to do the business analysis activity fine let us go to the next thing here like before getting into the details of document analysis let us understand the cost of doing business analysis in an organization like the the four cost what we have introduced here kind of like what you are seeing on the screen it is coming from the very low cost to the highest cost the one at the top is the low cost i'm not saying like it is cheap it is kind of like it is not very low uh, compared to the four levels it is a kind of like arranged in a in a hierarchical order from in a kind of like increasing order towards the bottom the business analyst compensation the stakeholders pro rata compensation because the stakeholders are not completely dedicated to the business analysis project but they are kind of like spending few of their hours in a week in a business analysis project so it is stakeholders compensation pro rated that is in equivalent to the time they are spending in business analysis project the next one is execution cost that is while doing business analysis we may have to undertake a travel we may kind of like uh, uh, purchase certain um, uh, documents or research reports all those things those things are uh, kind of like put together as a execution cost the last one the biggest cost is opportunity cost for example as a business analyst i am interviewing a vp sales every week 10 hours i am interviewing this vp sales 10 hours every week for the next 4 weeks so what i have done i have reduced this vp 3 quarter for the entire organization right this vp time like one quarter i have taken because assuming that he is is working for 40 hours in a week okay i have taken one quarter of his time and the thing is like what is the opportunity cost had i not interviewing this vp had i not interviewing this vp sales he might have made a million dollar sale for the organization that is the opportunity cost so the thing is like when we say the cost of doing business analysis the opportunity cost of our stakeholders is relatively higher when you are interviewing the people at the top level okay for example if you are interviewing a lot of vps directors and ceo definitely the opportunity cost is much more okay so the thing is like why we are discussing this in terms of document analysis if i am doing document analysis i may not be taking much time from all the people that is stakeholders as well as my kind of like my other people involved so that the stakeholder compensation and the opportunity cost will be as minimal as possible by doing a wonderful document analysis we actually reduce the cost of doing business analysis this is one of the invisible factor within the organization in many organization we don't see this 
it is not apparent right we don't see opportunity cost or we don't discuss about opportunity cost by doing by interviewing our stakeholders it's it never comes in our radar but it actually happens right whether we like it or not it happens if i am kind of like if i am using my stakeholders to understand from the basics from scratch i may be wasting lot of our stakeholders time and that has to be avoided the reason is when i am when i am interviewing lot of stakeholders and using them from for kind of like understanding even the basic things maybe i am kind of like uh, uh, siphoning the workforce of the organization or the productivity of the organization so as a business analyst we should be mindful of interviewing or using our stakeholders time to minimize that what is the what is the first step we should do we should do a thorough document analysis before getting into any business analysis project so this is a kind of like i would say the top level advantage of doing business analysis and of course we can reduce the cost of doing business analysis within the organization document analysis technique i want to make this two observations one is document analysis is the most important but unfortunately most ignored ignored technique in the field of business analysis the second thing is document analysis may be credited as the one and only technique that a business analyst here it says may use i would say must use in all her projects each and every time the two observations here i want to present are the most important and the most ignored technique in the field of business analysis is document analysis the second thing is document analysis may be credited as the one and only technique that a business analyst must use in all her projects each and every time that is when a business analysis project is assigned to me when a business analysis project is assigned to me the first thing what i should do is document analysis so we will get into like the the deeper parts of document analysis like let us understand some of the other factors document analysis comes under research we we also know like there are two kinds of research one is primary the other one is secondary document analysis falls under secondary research document analysis falls under secondary research because we don't create any documents for our for the purpose of doing document analysis but on the other hand we use the existing document within the organization we use the existing research within the organization to to understand the the area of business analysis activity so it falls under the secondary research it is not a primary research it is a secondary research then we discussed the document analysis here like we, we let us read this uh, uh, kind of like a, a very good definition document analysis is a means to elicit requirements you see elicitation we can do from various sources one is the existing documents within the organization and the second major source is our stakeholders the third one is the standards policies regulatory bodies that are kind of like that are governing your industry so these are all the three major sources we want to do document and we want to elicit requirements we elicit the requirements from these three groups one is the the kind of like the documents with existing within your organization that is this is within the organization that is also document analysis the second is the stakeholders we meet the stakeholders interview them and we gather the requirements the third one is the documents are the the policies procedures regulatory framework that is available outside the organization that is also document analysis so document analysis is kind of like i would say we should consider it is like two eyes one is document analysis the other one is meeting our stakeholders but the major focus is on stakeholders we kind of like we 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 give lot of focus on meeting the stakeholders and interviewing them but we give very less focus on document analysis a business analyst who is kind of like considering both these things i am not saying like we should be excessively focused on document analysis both are important we should consider it as two eyes of a business analyst this is kind of like both are equally important meeting the stakeholders eliciting the requirements from them is very important but at the same time we should have done the document analysis the due diligence or the due process we should have done before meeting the stakeholder so that we can do the work much smarter and the sources of business analysis or document analysis the sources of document analysis documents it typically includes business plans market studies contracts etc and you you have a complete list 
this is not an exhaustive list. The thing is like creativity is the limit to identify these documents. Creativity is the limit. The thing is like a smart business analyst will come out with a kind of like a different variety of documents where he can add much more knowledge about the domain before he gets into the before he starts meeting the stakeholders. So what is the stages of document analysis? The three stages preparation document review then wrap up in preparation part what we do we have to identify the document and collect the documents. What are all the documents that are relevant to this particular business analysis business analysis activity or the business analysis project that we have to identify that is the that is the first and foremost important the preparation part I have to identify and get these documents. I have to prioritize them that is part of the pre preparation itself. Then the next stage is I have to review the relevant documents and get the information out of them. That is I am actually this is like I am talking to the documents and getting the information out of this. The last one is a wrap up that is whatever the information I got out of these documents. I have to validate them. It is not necessary that I have I got this doc. I got this information from these documents. It has to be correct. No never believe any documents you have to question whatever the information you you have taken out of that that is we have to verify the authenticity and the credibility of the information what i got out of this document and that has to be validated only then it is applicable or it can be put to use so the three stages what we are discussing here is the first stage is preparation part that is identifying collecting and prioritizing the document the second thing is reviewing the document that is I am eliciting the information out of the document. Elicitation is not only talking to the stakeholders. Elicitation means wherever you pull the information wherever you pull the requirements out of whether a stakeholder or a document it is called elicitation. So in document review what I am doing I am taking this information from the documents. I am eliciting the requirements from the documents. I am taking the requirements out of these documents. Once I do this. The last stage is wrap up where I have to validate this information. I have to validate whatever the information I have collected. Fine. The next thing is. This is a kind of like high level the type of document analysis. The type of document analysis can be broadly classified into quantitative and qualitative. Under qualitative we have the content analysis that is kind of like here the business analytics. I'm saying business analytics is very useful in quantitative research in document analysis. That is I am subjecting a doc document through this uh, um, some kind of like analytics software. OK, whether it is Hadoop or R or SAS and I am trying to find out that which particular word is most repeated and I am identifying those words and from this I can get a quick understanding that this document is talking about this one. I can make a kind of like uh, I can make a understanding about this document a high level or even I would say the thing is like this document is talking about something more in number. So this may be a more relevant document compared to the other document Y. So X is more important because it is using this particular phrase more number of times and the thing is like all the all the words that are repeated so many times are kind of like more relevant. So I will select this document as a primary document rather than the other document and the qualitative under qualitative we have semiotics discourse analysis interpretive analysis conversation analysis and the grounded theory. So the thing is like the semiotics is about kind of like uh, understanding the signifier and the significant discourse analysis about kind of like uh, uh, during kind of like in the case of explanation how to understand interpretive analysis is reading between the lines conversation analysis is kind of like how how it is presented that is the tone of the document and other things because th these are all the qualitative things right the grounded theory is what is this document as a whole talks about what is the hypothesis this document wants to say okay that is that is the understanding about grounded theory so the typical format okay the typical format we use document analysis is given here okay you can, you can kind of like this is readable and when you get the presentation you may be able to use this and we will we will kind of like discuss one case study at the end uh, that will be kind of like that will throw more light into this okay format kind of like you can use any format but this is one of the most widely used uh, format and uh, issued by bcs so it's a uh, it's a kind of like relatively very helpful then document analysis worksheets 
you see the document analysis the the nature of the document what we can what we can use in document analysis are various things here we have presented eight that is it could be a written document because the what, what we are talking is the source of things we we discussed in one of the slide the type of documents we may use right here this is the nature of the documents we can use one could be a written document other could be a photograph cartoon posters map artifacts any other artifacts motion picture sound recording so all these things can be subjected to document analysis when we say document analysis we should not have a narrow understanding that only the written document or a printed document can undergo document analysis but anything documented okay we have to understand this way anything that is documented can undergo document analysis so this is the eight different types of uh, documents we can we can find and the thing is like uh, here this, these are all the this this uh, the link is very useful this is given by the uh, us department of education and these templates are very useful these are all the act active templates uh, pdf templates you can you can download from this particular site and the link is provided here that is created for the education department so it's a kind of like a relatively if i am using photograph what are all the questions i will you i will ask when i do document analysis using a photograph what are all the what are all the questions i may ask when i do when i do the document analysis on a written document so those things are presented here so kind of like you can you can take advantage of this by visiting this particular site fine the first case study here i want to give is this is a very mini case study you see in 2003 january we got a call from one of the one of the popular director in tamil nadu film director his name is jayam raja i hope you most of you know uh, jayam ravi his elder brother jayam raja we got a call from him and we were surprised that thing is like it, it may be a wrong call okay he introduced that uh, he is a jayam raja and uh, we immediately recognized his name but the thing is like we thought like uh, what do we this is a business physics is a business analysis organization what do we do with this uh, movie industry film industry and he invited for a discussion this is way back in uh, january 2013 and he said we are planning for a movie um, about a ips story and the thing is like uh, we want uh, uh, your organization's assistance to do a research a complete research on this topic whatever we give you have to provide a complete research and you have to recommend the logical sequences and other things and we said this is kind of like a quite interesting we never kind of like we never thought this is a this is a area where we can help but he he was convincing us that you can definitely help the thing is like but but he kind of like subsequently he planned planned for several meetings but the biggest shock to us is we don't have any clear idea about like as a audience we know many of our colleagues as a audience we know the film industry as a movie movie goer we know but we we don't know this industry as a insider so we relied on document analysis i'm i'm coming to say the importance of document analysis we relied on document analysis so what we have done we kind of like we got so many textbooks related to film industry from film institute of india we got several books and we kind of like we you we kind of like uh, made ourselves well versed with the terminologies used in the film industry this is just over a period of 15 days some three or four members of our team they were kind of like constantly reading materials and kind of like generating lot of documents on this area and the thing is like in a 15 days period the thing is like 15 days before they they didn't had any idea about this industry but in a matter of 15 days these three people who worked on this they have tremendous idea about this industry that is the power of document analysis the thing is like in in just 15 days time they have gone through all the documents related to this industry they prioritized and went through all these documents and they are in a position to talk to a director he is he is relatively veteran he is he is in the field for the last 20 years they are, they are talking to this guy who is who is in the field for 20 years equally i was so surprised when i went for the first meeting when my my team members were discussing with them it is not the smartness of the team members i would say the credit has to go to document analysis the document analysis is such a powerful technique that is from no wise i am able to talk to the level of subject matter expert because this director is a subject matter expert right 
he knows like what is going on in the industry and he knows the ins and outs of the industry so and this movie is going to be released in august august 14th it is going to be released and the thing is like uh, this is uh, one of the uh, first movie uh, yes to our knowledge in tamil nadu uh, using document analysis and used a consulting firm that they are specializing in business analysis okay let us move to the next one so when we say we collect various documents right we said we we are collecting so many documents and we want to go through these documents what is basically document analysis document analysis is nothing but going through the existing documents within the organization and outside the organization that are adding a great value to your business analysis project right and here when we when we want to do the prioritization we have to use this abc categorization that is the a category documents are called defining documents and they are composed of 5% the asserting documents that are composed of 15% the reference document that is 80% that means assuming that in your project in your business analysis project i have identified 100 documents say say 100 documents i have to divide these documents roughly 5% as a defining document 15% documents as asserting documents or 15 documents here since it is 100 it is 15 documents only and the rest 80 documents or 80% of the documents as reference documents what are these defining documents defining documents i should read like a textbook like a bab okay i have to read it cover to cover defining documents are kind of like you cannot take any any kind of like you cannot simply browse it or you cannot simply go through that or wherever you want to read you cannot do that the defining documents are the most important documents i should treat it like a textbook i should go through this cover to cover and should have a tremendous understanding about that that is the reason we call it defining documents without this without reading these documents there is no point in going and meeting the stakeholders the second is asserting documents that is I want to validate something cross validation. I have to use these documents. That is, I will go through something. I, I will go through a kind of like I get an idea in one document and I want to validate that idea through some other document. Those are all asserting documents. I have to kind of like uh, I have to go through them, not kind of like not like a uh, kind of like a defining document, but I have to go through them. The reference documents are I have collected uh, 80 documents here and this 80 documents. I will not go through them right away. I know that this document exists whenever required I will refer them that is the reason we call it reference documents so we have to divide our the whole documents I should not treat all the document equally right I should not all the documents are not equals all the documents are relevant but they are not equals so the a category documents are the most important that is that's that is the reason we call it defining documents that is without reading that there is no point in going for business analysis or meeting the stakeholders the next thing is asserting documents 15 document 15 percent the reference documents are 80 percent so i have to kind of like prioritize the documents in this manner then i will be having a good focus rather than giving or treating equally all the documents now i have which is most important and what i should do first defining documents is the first right so now what is the purpose of document analysis we kind of like at the beginning we said we want to reduce the cost of doing business analysis right we want to reduce the cost of doing business analysis that is a very high level but let if we go a little bit deeper into this the purpose is like multiple things one is i want to save stakeholders time i don't want to kind of like ask basic things many a time we as a business analyst i may kind of like i joined assume that i joined as a business analyst in in one of the bank and the thing is like i know my stakeholders are very knowledgeable my smes are very knowledgeable and the thing is like i should not be kind of like wasting their time that is rather than i do my homework i should not go and ask them could you please explain this process from scratch if i go through the process documentation i may be understanding that easily but rather i am kind of like going and wasting my stakeholder time i am asking him like could you please explain i don't know anything about this could you please explain this from scratch i am wasting my stakeholders time and the other thing is the thing is like uh, i am seen as a doctor to doctor to the business i am solving business problems the medical doctor solves human problems business analyst solves business problems i am seen as a doctor i am a kind of like a well reputed person within the organization i am seen as a smart person but i am going and asking the basic things 
to a, to a stakeholder and what happens the thing is like the stakeholders will lose confidence on me this guy is asking the basic things which is available like how can i how can i expect that he will solve the business problem i'm not giving confidence to him and the last one is about the authority you see if we go to any management books we read that authority and responsibility go hand in hand authority without responsibility and responsibility without authority are useless but the thing is like as a as a business analyst how many people are reporting to us does any of the stakeholders report to us in fact none of the stakeholders are reporting to us but we need the authority we don't have a formal authority but we have informal authority informal authority is what gandhi ji had right that is informal authority that is the leadership leadership in influencing the people what you want to do them right what you want them to do okay that is the informal authority informal authority is about influencing and leadership position so as a business analyst we are relying on informal authority and in fact we don't have any formal authority or precisely i would say zero formal authority within the organization it is it is for a purpose right the thing is like we our stakeholders are constantly changing in one project some group x may be my stakeholders and in other project group y may be my stakeholders so how can we make the stakeholders report to you that is that is a kind of like completely different structure right so here the business analyst is relying on informal authority to get the work done and how i will get informal authority if i am smart i will get the informal authority if i am asking basic questions i may lose my informal authority so this is a source of if i do a good preparation and show show myself in front of the stakeholder and ask smart questions i will have the informal authority over the stakeholders right so the three things are the the major reasons are the purpose of doing document analysis and this is tremendously helpful fine the business analysis is kind of like when we say the business analysis center of excellence it has to play a very vital role in document analysis in many organizations we don't kind of like find the documents in a organized manner so the thing is like these are all the the various aspects of a business analysis center of excellence and it has the documents and other things but we we want to focus on organization process asset what is organization process asset all materials used by groups within an organization to define tailor implement and maintain their processes it is basically business analysis process project related documents are called organization process asset of course it includes the templates policies procedures etc all these things put together called organization process asset and organization process asset is a is a centralized location where we can get the documents for performing our document analysis but what is the true scenario in organization we have three types of uh, organization process asset three forms it exists in one of the three forms one is a physical library in some organization all the reports whenever a final report is generated within three business days it should be landing in the physical library right that is that is kind of like even even kind of like uh, you might have heard like there are four four libraries identified in india that is in uh, kanimara library in chennai and uh, some other libraries around india there are four libraries in india whenever somebody publishes a book they have to send the book to all the four libraries that is a, that is a, that is a rule it is a, it is a kind of like it has to be submitted it it is a, it is a kind of like uh, when, whenever somebody the, this is the role of a publisher whenever a publisher publishes a book four copies should be sent to this regional libraries and this is like a organization process asset and here the same way in organizations whenever they have a physical library within three business days they have to submit this book submit this document whether it is business analysis or process related or project related they should submit to this physical library where everything is indexed and stored like uh, like uh, like uh, like the application of library science okay or kind of how how a librarian does the second form is enterprise content management system this is relatively becoming popular these days in many organizations we have enterprise content management system or document management system in some organizations they call it as a knowledge management system whatever be the name and here the documents are stored in electronic form with their metadata i go and type a particular keyword and it uh, kind of like it gives out all the documents that are relevant to this that is one form the last one is it is it is not a good one that is 
if i completed a business analysis report i will keep it with myself if somebody needs they have to approach me and they have to get it from me that is the most difficult part in the first two forms the first form is relatively easy the second form is the most easiest and it is accessible right away the third one is the most difficult and the document analysis for document analysis for performing document analysis we need the relevant documents and we have to get this document either from the physical library in your organization or enterprise content management in your organization or in case some organization if it is based on individual ownership we have to identify these people and we have to get the document that is the most difficult part i would say let us take this small case study assume we are going to launch a new airline okay we want to launch a new airline and we want to come out with the various systems and the one system we want to take as part of this is air ticket the thing is like i want to kind of like uh, since we are launching a airline and we have to come out with the the printed ticket okay the ticket has to be printed and the various softwares related to this the passenger reservation system so here we have kind of like by going through this document i have to have a this is kind of like this sounds like a very simple document right by seeing this we understand that kind of like it gives a very very simple image and it ha contains like various information let us decode this information as like a document analysis first we should understand the nature of this document the document type is printed document document nature is ticket it is a travel authorization authenticity it is very credible because it is issued by indigo airlines it is issued by the airline itself fine we want to discuss like more information which is all the information what i am discussing now it is available in the ticket itself the passenger name the first name and last name is required it is alpha characters are accepted it has like the first name can be uh, should be accommodated within 15 character last name 15 characters the passenger gender is there it is basically alpha and five characters are permitted passenger category alpha five characters it is a child or adult so i have so many information like passenger class airlines pnr crs pnr and the the passenger information that is ticket number a uh, basis ticket price a uh, price currency um, a flight number meal preference mobile number and the travel information travel related information airline name mode of travel date of journey in a particular format a uh, source location destination location so we get all this information so if i want to design a ticket like this i should understand the nature of this ticket right so the thing is like assume that we are we are launching a new airline xyz and i have taken like i may i may do document analysis on kind of like a couple of tickets available in the market i have say i may, maybe i i may take like indigo and jet airways and i will do a thorough document analysis about this and these are all the things my whole system should accommodate the thing is like unless this information is uh, not programmed or the screen is not programmed in your in your new new passenger reservation system it will not come out right so to to design the entire system i will go through this ticket and from this i will try to understand so in many cases like document analysis is particularly useful in two occasions one is i want to convert a manual process into a automated process so whatever i am doing in the manual process i should know and document analysis is very good thing the second thing is most of the time in our organization we improve the existing systems and for improving the existing systems we should understand the existing system again document analysis is important rather than asking about the system to my stakeholders i should go through the existing manual the past requirements document the past business analysis reports the past project management reports i have to go through all these documents and i should understand the current state of the system then i should try to find out what is the what is the, the what is the new features that need to be added for that i can go to my stakeholders but i should not ask my stakeholders explain the existing system wherever there are gaps that is fine but i should not try to do that from scratch so document analysis is a is a kind of like a fundamental thing when we want to create a new system or even we want to improve the existing systems okay let us continue mind maps mind maps are kind of like very helpful while doing document analysis this is i would say a piggyback technique okay that is along with uh, document analysis 
to make sense out of the document the thing is like i don't want to read this document again and again but rather i will go through the document for example i was kind of like assume that i am doing a research about global warming okay and what are all the various things associated with the global warming and all the information i am collecting from various sources and kind of like putting it here all the main branches are talking about a key thing and the the sub branches are getting into more and more detailed information so i can go deeper and deeper to get a kind of like a better presentation of the information what i have collected so the mind map is not a tool which will solve our business analysis problem or which will not solve our problem but mind map is a tool to organize the information what we have collected out of document analysis i have to store this information somewhere right either you can use the format which i have shown in in few slides back the 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 business uh, document analysis format either we can use that kind of like format or mind map is a very good alternative the thing is like picture is more than 1000 words right the thing is like i can share this with my stakeholders so that they will be getting a better understanding if i want to validate all my document whatever the document and because we have to validate the document analysis what we have performed and if i give the documents it may be a little bit difficult for my stakeholders but if i am able to present it in the form of a mind map it is much easier for them to assimilate and make any comments on that we can make the mind maps as more more and more interesting this is a very simple map i would say but rather in some, in some uh, kind of like uh, i have seen some of the maps which is kind of like beautifully presented and it kind of like it really makes you to read okay the thing is like your stakeholders will be enthused to to read the document uh, the reason is it is kind of like more pictographic and uh, it it kind of like uh, it passes the information or it uh, kind of like uh, it helps the stakeholder to understand the information in a much faster way okay and here if you see the bottom right bottom of the screen we have two uh, uh, hyperlinks x mind and i mind map mind map is kind of like originated from uh, tony buzan is credited as the inventor of mind maps okay and he is very popular for mind maps and uh, books related to mind map it's a very simple technique that is a kind of like presenting the information in a organized manner from the higher level to the lower level okay it is like a tree like structure so xmind is one of the software popular software and the same way i mind map is also another popular software and that is coming from tony buzan so we have mind map as one of the one of the picky back technique it is not a technique on its own but it helps us to do the document analysis in a better manner in terms of presentation fine so we are we are reaching the fag end of this uh, discussion i was going a little bit fast but uh, um, uh, we we are we are able to cover uh, various aspects the pros and cons of document analysis we have to understand this the benefits and at the same time the problems merits and demerits by doing document analysis a business analyst will gain extensive knowledge about the area in which he is doing the business analysis that is the domain the domain in the kind of like i am not talking about domain when i use the domain i am using it with reference to bab okay version 2 and 3 domain means the area in which we are doing business analysis activity not the vertical we are referring to right vertical is different vertical is called as business knowledge within bab okay but when we say domain the domain is reserved to the area in which i am doing business analysis activity it is a smaller portion within your entire organization nothing to do with the industry right so here when we say when we do the document analysis we can we can gain the business analyst can gain extensive knowledge about the area in a short period of time and he will save a lot of time of stakeholders that is a major advantage the presence ba as a knowledgeable person as we discussed and helps the ba to drive the ba business analysis project the thing is like he will when we you see when we have a good knowledge and understanding about the domain that is the area in which we are doing the business analysis project when we have a sound understanding we will have a leadership position when we don't have a sound understanding we will be always having a dilemma that is how to do this we will will be always kind of like seeing a forked roads we will not be able to march ahead right so this is the advantage of doing document analysis the the disadvantage are kind of like the problematic areas collecting the relevant document is a major challenge especially if the organization has individual ownership policy that is if i do the business analysis project i will keep the document anybody wants 
you have to come to me and get the document that is the most challenging thing i have to first i should know like who did what that itself is a biggest problem then i have to get the document from him right so the thing is like that is that is a collecting the relevant document is a major challenge then the second thing is ba should be a ba needs certain competencies here the ba should be a good reader and to take advantage of this technique he should be a good reader a person who is hesitant to read documents cannot do document analysis so the thing is like what we should understand here is it is not that everybody may have a good reading habits but if we are a ba we should cultivate that habit let us improve gradually there is nothing called a limit right we can constantly improve on this skill set ba should be a good reader otherwise the thing is like they will not be able to take advantage of this technique the third one is consumes relatively a lot of time the thing is like because after doing lot of research i may be landing on some area okay which i can easily get from my stakeholder but the thing is it is a kind of like uh, uh, on the other hand like by by if you evaluate the the kind of like the cost benefit analysis doing document analysis outweighs all the problems doing document analysis will outweigh outlay, uh, outweigh all the problems what we have identified here okay so the the major thing is the business analyst will get a sound understanding you see the business analyst is connecting the brains right we are connecting the brains in kind of like till 1960s we never heard of this business analyst position because most of the inventions came from the individuals the thing is like if we take edison he is he is the business analyst he is the system analyst and he is the implementer he did all the three jobs so most of the inventions until 1960 it came from the individuals so there is no need of business analyst but post that the inventions were started coming out of companies organizations where lot of people are working together to come out with a new product system or service there we needed the business analyst the reason is now we have individual brains and these brains need to be connected and we the business analyst do this job we make the people to understand and for that purpose we do lot of assimilation within ourselves we need a greater understanding if a business analyst has a greater understanding about the area of business analysis activity that is the domain it is a kind of like the project is already half successful right the implementation is a is a i would say a relatively easier thing if a, if the business analyst is having a leadership position and have a good understanding then the project is already half successful and putting it other way the thing is like uh, many reports for example standish report it says 60% of the failed projects fatally failed projects the reason is the requirements were wrong at the beginning itself so the thing is like document analysis helps us the helps the business analyst to have a greater understanding before commencing a business analysis project the competencies required for a business analyst to do or conduct document analysis what are all the skill set we should possess as a business analyst i should have this skill set or i should cultivate this skill set to do a better document analysis first one i should have a good learning habit second i should be a creative thinker for example i landed up with a new business analysis project it is up to my creativity to come out with the it is up to my creativity to come out with the list of documents i should refer the thing is like it is it is creativity is the limit then the third one is attitude for research you see we should not in in case of research whenever we use the word research we should not kind of like uh, look for a quick win right maybe kind of like i will i may be kind of like spending a day without any success but the second day i may get a wow experience right that is i i got the information what i want the business analyst should experience this right the thing is like as a business analyst i should have good attitude and aptitude for research the fourth one is comprehension ability i go through the document i should able to understand the fifth one is modeling i should be able to present this information in a in a better manner so that i collect information from different quarters and i am able to present in a in a good manner and the last one is systems thinking as a business analyst we should be able to understand the system as a whole the business analyst is the person who conceives the project or the solution first in the mind he kind of like he sees the solution as a whole piece that is systems thinking so with this we are concluding our discussion 
and if you have any questions please type in the chat area and we will we will clarify the questions then we will uh, kind of like conclude this session please type your uh, question in the chat area the chat area is located on the uh, right hand side bottom okay on your right hand side bottom that is on the go to webinar panel you will find a chat area you may have to expand it yeah sudhendra has a question here do you have any checklist for document analysis i would say rather than checklist the thing is like today we discussed the various aspects right you might have seen this format that format is relatively like a checklist and we also have seen we have also seen the the thing is like the worksheets we have presented some eight worksheets during our discussion that is like a checklist you can use them as a, a real checklist because it is a the pdf it is a editable pdf so you can use it as a um, kind of like a checklist then i have the next question why is document analysis a commonly ignored practice um i would say it is a kind of like not popularized in many organizations okay it is not popularized the technique is not popularized that is one reason the other could be the thing is like we always go for the easiest route right my stakeholders knows this very well let me talk to him rather than going through the document okay but we kind of like when we understood when we understood the importance and the benefit of document analysis then hereafter we will not ignore this right okay um kannan sir made a reference and uh, he appreciated the fbi story and the other case studies thank you sir and uh, your your motivation goes a long way in uh, making the sessions better and better thank you sir uh, karpaga rajendran has a question semiotics okay what do we mean by semiotics under uh, under under uh, under the types of document analysis this is about the thing is like we have if, if we take the language part um, it is a kind of like we we use something to describe we, some there is some words as a description that is adjectives the other one is the object which is explained so the semiotics is finding the relationship okay that is i am saying that greenhouse is good for the society or greenhouse or kind of like sorry greenhouse is uh, kind of like uh, uh, greenhouse control greenhouse emission control is good for the society and good for planet earth we are making this assertion here the semiotics is the greenhouse is something we are explaining and it is attributed or it is connected to the earth okay the benefit is the earth is getting the benefit the society is getting the benefit who is getting the benefit that is or it is referring to whom that is the society and the earth the description is about explaining a element so it is like that is called the semiotics that is the signifier and the signified the earth is signified the signifier is the phrase okay the next one is salman has a question here my project does not have any formal documentation what should i do you see here rely on your creativity the thing is like we can never say that i don't have document for this the thing is like you can buy certain research work from outside you can kind of like get the textbooks related to this you can go through the research journals that is kind of like uh, so many research papers were published and you can go through this uh, journals and get this information so the thing is like uh, it is a, it is a kind of like relatively i would say i would, we can we can find the documents for anything we should go with this attitude we have to go with the attitude that how to get anything any document or document for anything so there is kind of like you see whatever we do we are not doing first time right except if we are if we are inventing something okay whatever we do whatever i do i am not doing anything first time okay so many people have done in the past we have to only thing is we have to find out that in which direction i will get this so kind of like with this with this direction maybe like you look for the documents that is that is the reason i said creativity is the limit for getting the documents okay then vishwas has uh, vishwas put a question would you be sending a copy of this presentation uh, the thing is like this whole recording will be available um, as a um, as a kind of like youtube video uh, but but only with the the presentation part and the recording um, um, in iabs chennai chapter 
uh, YouTube channel and you will be getting this uh, link uh, by by tomorrow morning. Uh, so you can you can go through this. And Vishwas has uh, another question. Um, this is Vishwas Shetty. Sorry. Uh, how and with whom do you validate the understanding that you have documented after doing document analysis? Excellent question. One is I can do the validation by checking across the documents. I can I can go through several other documents. That is the reason we called attribute documents, right? The thing is like uh, uh, we we kind of like we can go through the other documents and validate whatever I have collected from one document. That is one way. The second thing is of course at this point I can go to my stakeholders also. Right. So two ways we can validate the documents. Chinmay has a question here. Due to time constraints in some projects, we may not be able to complete the analysis to the full extent. How do you suggest we tackle such scenarios? Prioritization is the key. The thing is like prioritize and identify the most important documents rather than reading all the documents. Identify the most important documents and spend good good amount of time or the limited time what you have on those documents that will kind of like help us to to kind of like uh, even in the crazy projects we can do some good amount of work in document analysis. Arvind has a question here. What is the best way to present or share the outcome from document analysis? I would say mind map is the, one of the best tool to present the outcome of document analysis. The thing is like the format which we discussed is also a good one. But the thing is like it is relatively I would say it is a kind of like uh, it's a boring thing, right? But mind maps are relatively it makes your stakeholders kind of like it helps your stakeholders to be kind of like go through the documents and uh, pictures are easily kind of like we can easily digest the material, right? So it kind of like you can easily read. So I would say mind map is one of the best way to present the outcome of document analysis. Anbar Sumanik Asagam has a question. Is document analysis is the same as going through ASIS documents? It is the same thing. Like the current, like ASIS documents is typically it is uh, uh, kind of like uh, used with reference to process documents. Okay. The ASIS process maps or current state maps. Okay. The thing is like when we say document analysis, it is of course ASIS documents. Whatever we have, right? Whatever we have, that is the existing documents. That is the reason we say existing documents within and outside the organization that are relevant to the the area in which we are doing the uh, uh, business analysis activity or the domain. Okay, Satish has a question here. Is there any quick ways to categorize the documents into defining assertive and reference documents? The thing is like the quick way is one is by doing the quantitative analysis. The quantitative analysis like we should use it should be an electronic document and we should use some of the uh, business analytics tools and this is one of the very good area where a business analyst can integrate the business analytics practices into the uh, into the into into our business analysis work the thing is like by by submitting the documents to 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 this softwares what we can get is it kind of like it it finds out the repeating structure within this by by seeing that you can identify the most important document this is one scientific way of doing and one of the fastest way to do OK, and for example, like you see the document analysis, for example, the, when, when we submit a paper to a international journalism journal, the thing is like they go through the plagiarism, right? The thing is like, uh, did we copy this material from somewhere? So that is a kind of like that is a, the, the, the tools that are used to find out the plagiarism. It is it is again document analysis and how they do like they kind of like they, they have access to all these research journals in the past. And this is kind of like each and every phrases and paragraphs are taken and they are compared at various levels. So it is a kind of like uh, the business analytics that is business analytics and that, that kind of business analytics applied in document analysis area. OK, but here the thing is like that is one of the fastest way. But the other one is it's a kind of like for that purpose we can we can rely on the certain the, the validity and credibility of the document. For example, if a document is coming from I would say government of India. OK, I will have a great trust on the particular document. But if a document is coming from one individual, I may kind of like have a doubt about the credibility, right? So it is it's the two extremes, right? I'm getting a document from government of India. Uh, it is a it is a publication from government of India and I will have a huge trust on the document. But on the other hand, the document coming from one individual. The thing is like he may have several other motives coming out with this. OK. So it is a kind of like based on who is giving the document to you or it is coming from whom that will kind of like help us to identify that it is a kind of like uh, 
is, is it kind of like should i should i uh, should i kind of like uh, take this into my uh, defining document or assertive document you can you can make the things in those cases like maybe the government of india document i will put it as a defining document but the other document the from coming from one individual who is who is kind of like written this as an article i may put it under reference okay whenever i need something like i may refer it but i will take this government of india document as a defining document okay then the next question from arun mathad why are document versions not updated regularly in your organization it becomes difficult for your newbie it, it is a matter of discipline and this has to be taken up by the business analysis center of excellence the the person who is manning the business analysis center of excellence uh, they have to drive this discipline within the organization it is a matter of discipline and following up with that salman ahmed has a question we do not have high level of high level documents how can we do document analysis with only technical documents the thing is like i would say the high level documents it's a kind of like uh, in many a time the high level documents may be appearing as minutes of meetings that is at the, at the level of the business okay but we can get the kind of like uh, the uh, i answer to one previous question that is by going through the by going through the research and other things we can get a kind of like uh, a document at a very high level it need not have to come from within the same organization maybe from the same organization we want something specific but the thing is like for the high level the thing is anything available in the industry is very useful okay ashish singh has a question here when exactly a document analysis should come into picture how about the beginning of requirement illustration or better after understanding the requirements and then going for document analysis you have answered the question yourself that is at the beginning of requirement illustration okay not at the end of requirement illustration the reason is before i meet the stakeholders i want to be very knowledgeable in this area and only then i can kind of like i i, I will not waste their time so the thing is like the moment i'm i'm called by a vp and the vp is saying like venkatesh you are going to do this project so the first thing what i should do is i should do the document analysis i should collect the relevant documents and i should get a good understanding typically like this this happens with all the business analysts right when we when we start with a business analysis project we may not have a sound understanding about a particular area but what happens over a period the thing is like in another 10 days 15 days we get a good idea and we get this uh, wow experience or aha experience i would say the thing is like i have a, now i understood what this is okay so that moment that is the period where we have to actually do the document analysis and this will accelerate our kind of like uh, good understanding about the about about uh, about the particular domain sham has a question here how to identify the define assertive reference form the 100 okay the 100% of document okay the thing is like you see here it is basically in case of like in case of the structured methodology that is the organization has a physical library you kind of like uh, the in in library in a proper library it should be stored with various indexes using those indexes we can pull out the documents and in case of uh, the enterprise content management systems or knowledge management systems by typing the relevant keywords we can we can pull all those documents and we can filter them okay then prabhas has a question here okay i think it is answered already okay um okay i have some comments here okay yeah thank you for the comments okay gaurav has a question here are there any standards set for document analysis okay the thing is like you see document analysis it is used it is not only kind of like applicable to business analysis area it is used in several other fields each one has a kind of like uh, different uh, i would say methodologies in case of forensic science it is used in an extreme manner and uh, a word of caution don't read the book like which i presented at the beginning of this like when i said the fba story maybe go to the link but don't buy the book because it is completely about document analysis but it is go it goes to extreme extent about the solving a crime okay we don't uh, we don't want that extent uh, but the thing is like several several things are relevant to business analysis okay 
so i i would say in case of methodology it is kind of like what we discussed is like a very high level framework uh, the information is pulled from uh, different sources okay and i think this framework will act as a very good uh, guide for doing document analysis okay then okay i uh, yeah i think we have several comments about the session thank you so much for the uh, comments okay and uh, i hope uh, i hope we we are very good at this point and uh, thank you for participation and once again i thank you uh, kanan sir for uh, giving us the opportunity to present this session uh, thank you so much and uh, have a, a wonderful evening and we will meet in the next session thank you bye for now